Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to this month's edition of Glendale Today. And our show this month is going to feature a program that's here in Glendale uh, that is very important to myself and, and really to all of our citizens, and it's called From the Heart. From the Heart is a grant program that started 20 years ago back in 1997, and since then has actually distributed more than two and a half million dollars donated to agencies in Glendale helping our local nonprofits serve their critical needs of our residents. And let me explain how this works. Every month on your water bill, uh, you'll see a box where you can donate two dollars. In 2014, I worked with our city council uh, to increase the donation from one dollar to two dollars, and I know that sounds sort of strange, but our computers would only allow us to double it. With that, uh, the, the city council uh, agreed with me and passed uh, an ordinance where we now have the opportunity for you to donate two dollars, and that money uh, that you donate actually goes to people in need. And a lot of people was confused thinking that it paid for their water bill. It doesn't. It goes to all these different organizations that we're going to talk about today to help them accomplish things that help our citizens. And now those funds are set aside every year. We're able to provide up to $200,000 in uh, each grant cycle. And last year, we made that $200,000. Now next year, 2017, uh, is going to uh, make the 20th anniversary of From the Heart Grant Program. So what I want to do with this show today is get some of our people out that we're very proud of, uh, let them speak to you, the citizen, and, and explain their programs and, and how that money that you donate actually goes to helping their programs. So I'd like to uh, introduce a few of the agencies that have received the funding so they can help you understand some of the critical needs that many people have in our city each and every day. Uh, you probably noticed that we're not in the studio today, we're on location today. We're actually at the Boys and Girls Club here in Glendale. Now, they're one of the agencies that actually received funding from the last grant cycle. I'm here with Alex Garza, who is the unit director of the Boys and Girls Club, and thank you for hosting us today. Uh, we also have Kyle Harris. Uh, he's marketing and communications manager for New Leaf. Kyle? And then we also have Regina Edwards, who is the CEO of the YWCA, also here in Glendale. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. So, Alex, if we could, if we could start with you, uh, since you are the Boys and Girls Club and we're in your building, tell us about your programs, if you would. So the mission for the Boys and Girls Club here in Metro Phoenix is to enable all youth, especially those who need us most, to become caring, productive citizens as, as adults. Some of the resources will be used to help grow our programs in academic success, good character and leadership, the arts, as, as well as teen programs. We're serving a large number of youth. Um, currently, we're seeing anywhere from 190 youth a day to 200 youth, and then anywhere from 65 teens to 80 teens a day. So we're certainly growing. The need is there. 67% of the youth that we're serving come from families that are living at or below the poverty level. We're connected to the neighboring school, which is Harold Smith, and the free and reduced lunch rate there is 97%, which means those kids are getting their breakfast at school, they're getting their lunch at school, and what happens to those kids when they're done with school? Um, well, that's where we come in. We're able to uh, give them an afternoon snack as well as a hot meal. They get dinner every day at 5.30, that's included in their $30 membership. Um, so hope, hoping to combat that malnutrition that some of our population in this area are facing. You do some incredible work here, uh, servicing uh, the Glendale youth, and we want to thank you so much for that. Uh, and, and I've been uh, fortunate to be involved in some of the things that you've done here. Absolutely. The things you do at Christmas and, and uh, some pretty incredible stuff. But Kyle, uh, you're up next. Uh, I understand that uh, you can tell us about a new leaf and a, a specialty services that you provide, and, and that is in Glendale, but we're, we're not going to talk about addresses or anything because you're, yeah. you're protecting uh, the folks that, are, that, that you serve. So if, if you would, go ahead and, and, and explain to us a little bit about uh, your organization. You bet. Uh, a New Leaf has several programs in the city of Glendale. We have a large counseling center for children and families. We also provide tax assistance preparation for low-income individuals. One of our best-known programs in the city is our Faith House Domestic Violence Shelter. Uh, it's Arizona's oldest operating domestic violence shelter. It's located here in Glendale, and uh, it's been around for such a long time. Uh, we help women who are escaping abusive relationships, 
And part of that service is a court advocacy effort uh, where we have a full-time court advocate who works in the Glendale City Courts. We work with presiding judge Elizabeth Finn to help mothers who come from an abusive relationship and they need support uh, such as protective orders, legal support, safety planning, uh, finding a shelter, basic needs. And because of the court rules, the employees of the court are not allowed to help with that. So our advocate is there to help them when they need that service. And we're really proud of that service. It helps a lot of people. You can imagine the plight of someone who is in an abusive relationship. Kyle, if, if, I, if I could interrupt you there for just a second, one of the reasons why we specifically asked you uh, to be in this is uh, at this taping is because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and, uh, and this will be uh, aired in, in the month of October. That was specifically one of the reasons why we wanted you here for this taping. Uh, amongst all everything else, but, but I wanted to kind of point that out to, to the new folks. But uh, go ahead and, and, and give us some other ideas of the things that you folks do and, and how you help. You bet. Well, we educate the public. We provide services in the form of advocacy, shelter, and basic needs. We are a partner with other not-for-profits to serve the community. But domestic violence especially is a pervasive problem in our community. A lot of people don't realize that one in four women experience physical violence in their lifetime. So it's a huge challenge in the community and we're there to help victims of d domestic violence, both men and women, and especially the children who are in a situation like that. In fact, I met with one of our residents of Faith House, her name is Emily, and she was in a situation where her husband did not allow her to work, so she had no resources, no financial savings. Her husband uh, did not allow her to go out and meet with friends. And over a period of several years, she suffered extensive abuse uh, to the point of, she, of suffering from brain trauma. So when she came to our shelter, we helped her with medical treatment. We helped her get a protective order from her husband. And now she's in such a much better shape than she ever was before. And, and a lot of times the children of those families, children don't know that that's not the normal. It's not normal, not even close to being normal, but to them that is normal. So they don't even know that they should be trying to get away from that type of situation. That's right. And you know, the evidence is such that uh, young children who are raised in that kind of environment oftentimes become an abuser later on. So it's so important to get a mother out of that situation and help the children with support, uh, counseling. That's why we have a counseling program as well, uh, which really, uh, the both of them help families in need. Right, excellent. Well, Regina, how about you? Uh, you're with the YWCA, probably probably one of the most popular uh, uh, known names. But uh, uh, if you would tell us about some of the programs that you folks are doing, I, and I know you got a lot of different things going on because um, I, I see it all the time. Well, here in Glendale, we are the only provider of senior meals programs. So what that means in terms of the population in the city of Glendale is in the course of a year, we will serve 105,000 meals. And the say, break, say that again. 105,000. In one year. In one year. So you think Thanksgiving is busy at your house? Come to our kitchen where in one day, we're doing about 425 meals. And what's even more interesting is the breakdown. So within the city of Glendale, we're serving the vulnerable elderly, seniors, as well as the disabled. And in the course of that year, about 65,000 of those meals are gonna to go to homebound participants through Meals on Wheels. And I know you've participated with us in and that, and Mr. Mayor. And I enjoy that, I enjoy that And a lot. the other 40,000 are in our dining rooms. So we have our own a dining room on 61st Avenue. And then we also work with the city of Glendale and do the meals at three other locations. And so in the course of a year, that's a lot of meals, but it's really more than a meal because we also do over 800 different types of programs. So it might be, might be nutrition, it might be exercise, it might be health, and we do that through partnerships around the community in Glendale. Yeah, well, 800 programs, I don't want you to tell us all 800, but tell us about <laughs> 700. So <Not> really. <laughs> um, several of them, we have a great relationship with Midwestern University here in Glendale, and their faculty and their students will come and do programming with us. They work with us on a health fair every year. We do general nutrition programs. We know that as people age, oftentimes they aren't thinking about their nutrition, and sometimes their families can't be there every day. We also do programming around other health areas. So for example, 
Um, we may do one around diabetes. We may do one around depression. So it really varies. We ask the seniors who come into our programs what they're interested in and then search for the best faculty and individuals to come and work with us and provide those programs. Yeah, now what about the other, the other side, not, not the elderly, but the young? That we do coordinated programming on the youth side. At our location in Glendale, there's a program called DFAB. It's Drug Elimination Family Awareness, and that program's been going on for more than 20 years. And it was started by a couple of individuals who were very concerned about youth in Glendale and also wanted to ensure that the culture would continue. So they do a whole range of programming around um, ballet folklorica and traditional Mexican dance. And they're incredibly well known. They've performed across the country. They do a performance at the Orpheum. And what we do in the partnership is we've provided the space in the building free of charge. Then we do some other coordinated efforts with them. So it's a nice way that the building really is used throughout the entire day. You, you know what's amazing to me is when you talk about the youth, seeing the three of you sitting there side by side, each one of you could actually affect the others as far as uh, you know how, how our youth are being taken care of. And uh, again, all of, of what you do is so important. There's different different degrees to uh, where you actually would step in. I think uh, Alex, probably yours is probably would be the very first uh, catching the kids when they're young. And, Absolutely. Uh, and you know, and, and if you would, we still got a couple more minutes. If, if you'd talk a little bit about more about uh, what what you do here. As mentioned earlier, you know, some of some of our kids do come from violent backgrounds where, where there's not the right role models in the home. Um, and bringing them to the club, they're being exposed to healthy adult relationships, as well as learning to foster positive relationships among them, amongst their peers. Because as, as mentioned earlier, when you come from a violent background, sometimes those are the kids in school that are being bullying other people or just hitting and, and getting into fights. and and the reason that they're doing those types of behaviors is because that's all they know. So when you can remove them from that situation and expose them to some of the positive programming that we have, like making healthy choices or smart leaders or passport to manhood, where it's teaching these young men to become successful adults. You know, what does it look like to be a strong father? What does it look like to be a leader? Right. Um, on the flip side, we, we offer the same sorts of programming for the females um, through programs like Smart Girls, where we're teaching these girls to um, value their self-worth because a lot of the females that we serve, they come from absent fathers. And so, as we know, males are very important, um, not only in young men, but in young, young women as they're growing up to teach them to respect themselves, to set those boundaries, to set those goals, and to attain those goals, ultimately. Well, awesome. Well, listen, I, uh, I really want to thank all of you for, for being here today uh, and joining us in this first segment. Uh, I'd also like to thank our citizens for, for hearing what they have to say. Now, when we uh, finish up here in, in just a few seconds, we're actually going to be coming back after break. We're going to have a couple more uh, incredible organizations that uh, are also participating in this. So if you would, uh, just uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll be back just uh, here real briefly. Thank you. Thank you again for coming out. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you.